Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines overnight, a man is in serious condition after police say he was shot in the chest just north of downtown. We'll have the latest. The president leaving Washington for the first time in nearly two months. I'm Alex Perche coming up the reason for his trip and his message to Americans returning to work. And take a look outside with live cam, 71 degrees outside. Check in with Mike and find out what your forecast is looking like midweek. Uh, things are getting interesting out there as we speak. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is May 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Yeah, it was uh, warm yesterday. It was, and about this time yesterday morning, we had some ground clutter and stuff showing up on radar, but this morning, completely different picture out there. Yeah, this little disturbance, and we started talking about this yesterday uh, about mid-afternoon, mm -hmm. that a lot of computer models were picking up this little disturbance that was going to slide through in behind that front that came in, and... Yeah, they, it, uh, it's living up to the billing there. So we do have something showing up on radar as of right now. And as a matter of fact, they've had some uh, very heavy downpours down there in southern uh, Maverick County as well as in uh, Dimmick County. And uh, we've got all of this working its way down to the southeast. A lot of this, though, is, I think, evaporating before it reaches the ground. Obviously, some is reaching the ground, but the air is really, really dry around here in behind that front. Now, obviously, we've got uh, some heavier spots, a little bit of, in the way of lightning down there around Carn City, Quero, a couple of lightning strikes as well. In and around town, we do have a few of the showers showing up. Um, I haven't seen any reports from the reporting stations. Now, in between, obviously, that doesn't mean there may not be a couple of those showers that are heavy enough to actually uh, reach the ground. There's a couple more further up to the north. Now, the overall uh, overall scenario is going to be for some of these in the southern half of our viewing area, and they may last through the rest of the morning and even about noontime, and then they'll finally kind of move on out of here. There is a flood advisory until 534. That one little uh, spot right down there in southern uh, Maverick County and the extreme southwestern corner of Dimmitt County had some uh, fairly heavy rain earlier in the overnight hours. 71 degrees here in town, mid 60s in the hill country, and then you look at the dew point temperatures. I mean, there's a 20 degree difference, so there's really, really dry air in the atmosphere, which is why some of this may be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground, although there will be a shower or two. Molds on the low side, same thing with grass. Throughout the day, we will have some of these showers mainly to the south, continuing the worth way to the south, and then partly cloudy skies by later on today. Still very dry air out there, 85 degrees. We're still looking at another front just in time for the weekend. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Any uh, showers showing up on Transguide, Marcus? Not yet, Mike, but okay. we're going to be keeping a close eye on that just in case because we do have construction out there as well. Now, right now, as you take a look at the map, you can see no incidents out there that should slow you down as far as accidents or other big obstructions. This is I-10 in La Cantera. There's that construction. It almost looks as if uh, they're getting ready to start picking up those barrels, so uh, hopefully that's a good sign. Moving over to uh, 151 at 410, you can see uh, traffic move along fairly well. It looks like we have some flashing lights out there, so watch out for some additional construction crews. And then 35 at 1604, once again, that area just beyond 35. So if you're on uh, 1604 headed northbound towards 35 from the Randolph area, just uh, be advised, do have some construction there. I-10 Dominion also, so that's going to be outbound on I-10. Hopefully we'll get all this picked up before it causes any delays. Leslie? Now to the latest on a shooting near one of the Alamo Colleges. San Antonio police say a man in his 20s was shot in the chest near Crockett Park north of downtown last night. SAPD says the victim's roommates called police after he came rushing to their apartment with a gunshot wound to the chest. Officers say the victim could not give them a description of the suspect. He was taken to the hospital in serious condition. Police say they did find one shell casing but did not find a suspect due to the lack of information. San Antonio Fire Department also confirmed that an Alamo College's police officer was hurt after getting into a car crash while responding to the shooting scene. Police say that the officer had a medical condition and was taken to the hospital. The latest order from the governor says businesses including hair salons, tanning salons and swimming pools can all reopen on Friday. This as the city of San Antonio and Bear County report that more than 1600 COVID-19 tests have come back positive. This is out of more than 28,000. The latest numbers show more than 800 have recovered and the amount of deaths increased by four since the last report. So it's a total of 52, but three of those deaths actually happened last month, but the city was just notified. And the fourth death was Clifford Childs that reported on yesterday, an inmate who apparently contracted the disease at the county jail. 
When it comes to cases in and out of the Bear County Jail, more than 1,300 cases are in the community. 49 of those are among jail staff. More than 200 are among jail inmates. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf saying many of the cases are asymptomatic. A doctor with UT Health San Antonio says it's important to care about the number of cases both in our community and the jail. Meanwhile, school district leaders are looking ahead to the overwhelming task of planning for the return of kids to the classroom during this pandemic. Superintendents for San Antonio and Northside Independent School Districts both say they're going to need feedback from parents on what they would like to see and what's working for their families. Both superintendents expect a form of a blended program involving distance and in-classroom learning. They expect students to eat their lunch in the classroom and most contact sports might be absent. Because the health guidelines are changing weekly, they say there's no real way to predict how their plans will change. The flexible planning could take a toll on the district's budgets, too. Until you know and we can predict what the model will be, how exactly we're going to serve students, it's, it's a little bit hard to say what the impact of the budget will be. Certainly, any of these options are more expensive than what we would traditionally do. Schools are designed for efficiency. Uh, they're really not designed uh, for social distancing. SAISD says it is looking to star summer school in July and the fall semester on August 10th. The plans will vary from school to school based on the campus size. And ISD says they're still looking to narrow down a start date for summer, but they do hope to start the fall semester in early August. President Trump traveling out of Washington for the first time in nearly two months. He visited a Honeywell factory in Phoenix, Arizona that's now making N95 masks. All of this as the nation navigates how to reopen without jeopardizing lives. Alex Prichet has more from Washington. Touring a facility that makes those critical N95 masks, President Trump pitching his case for reopening the country. We can't keep our country closed for the next five years. Of the 38 states now easing restrictions, cases are on the rise in at least 19. The president sitting down with ABC's David Muir about the possibility of more death due to reopening. It's possible there will be some because you won't be locked into an apartment or a, or a house or whatever it is. but. At the same time, we're going to practice social distancing. We're President Trump also videos, defending his move to wind down his coronavirus task force and touting testing availability for returning workers. If they want to get tested to see if they've been exposed to the virus, uh, they can have access to both the antibody have tests. No problem. His they optimism, have no in problem. contrast to warnings in two new analyses, one from Johns Hopkins reports the daily death rate could double by June. The other from the University of Washington that with premature openings, the number of deaths could increase to nearly 135,000 by August 4th. These models have been so wrong from day one. Washington state began opening parks and golf courses Tuesday. Texas is opening some personal service businesses. Still, a new Washington Post University of Maryland poll shows Americans overwhelmingly oppose the reopening of restaurants, retail stores and other businesses. New York's governor remains cautious despite the hurt to the economy. How much do we think a human life is worth? The president was also asked about unemployment. One of his advisors is projecting it to hit 19%. The president continuing to say that we're going to have a strong third quarter. New unemployment numbers are out tomorrow. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 438, 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the race for a vaccine. More on how several pharmaceutical and biotech companies are launching human trials in the United States to treat coronavirus. And next, while well, Texas schools remain closed for the rest of the school year, we'll take a look at one state that's already starting to open classrooms back up again. And live cam giving us a look outside on your Wednesday morning. So happy to have you with us. We'll be back. In your morning headlines, the vast majority of American students won't be going back to school this uh, academic year. But in one state, schools have the option to reopen now. The smallest number of students in Montana will be back in the classroom starting this week. State's governor says local districts can reopen schools starting tomorrow. And some schools with fewer than 100 students are taking up on it. Uh, one is a one-room schoolhouse with 14 students, grades K through 8th grade in Cohagen, Montana. They're expected to be among the first U.S. students back in the class amid the pandemic. Most states, including us here in Texas, have no plans to resume the 2019-2020 academic year. In business headlines, Disney's profits plunged 91% last quarter after the company had to close down the parks for a pandemic. Although sales were up to $18 billion for the first quarter, Disney's profits still took a hit from the closures. According to multiple reports, Disney plans to reopen its Shanghai Disney Resort on May 11th. 
No word, though, on when the U.S. parks will reopen. Your chances of dying in a traffic accident appear to be continuing a years-long decline. Preliminary estimates from the Department of Transportation show that traffic fatalities were down last year. That continues a trend that was also seen in 2017 and 2018. Passengers saw the greatest reduction with a 4% decline. Motorcyclists fared the worst, only reducing their chance of death by 1%. About 440 fewer people died in traffic accidents last year, even though we saw a 0.9% increase in miles driven. One dark spot is people involved in crashes with large trucks with 1% more likely to die. 443, 71 degrees. Still ahead, YouTube is recruiting celebrities and even former President Barack Obama to be a part of the new series of online commencement addresses for graduates. And next, a longtime nonprofit seeing a huge demand in for its services in one of the most vulnerable populations. Time now is 46. New coronavirus vaccine trials are starting up with volunteers getting their first doses. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the race for a vaccine. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech officially launching human trials in the United States, giving the first volunteers a dose of the potential vaccine or a placebo at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. On Monday, David Rock, a 26-year-old microbiology and immunology PhD student there, was the very first person to be injected. The study, taking place at multiple sites across the country, will test four different variations of the vaccine, all using genetic material known as messenger RNA, hoping to spark an immune system response, including the production of antibodies to fight the virus if that person's exposed. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive Exclusive, a live interview with one of the lead doctors of the Pfizer vaccine trial, Dr. Kathleen Newsel. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Over on San Antonio's west side, the ongoing mission of uh, House the Neighborly Service to, I'm sorry, let me try this again. The ongoing mission of the House the Neighborly Service to serve the most vulnerable members of its community is now more urgent than ever. Our Jesse de Goyado says the longtime nonprofit has seen a huge demand for the freshly made meals it serves four times a week for seniors. Birthday. Happy birthday. birthday balloons and a hot home-cooked meal. It's what the House of Neighborly Service does for its seniors on San Antonio's west side. All the time they are giving us love. As well as a freshly prepared lunch, la chicharrones con tomate, charro beans, and mixed veggies that seniors also can pick up. Its executive director doesn't want to think what not providing nutritious meals would mean for seniors on fixed incomes. They do with what they have, and we're just providing that extra meal, you know, the home-cooked meal for them. Especially since the pandemic, being that its clients are among those at highest risk, most aren't taking any chances. It's hard. It's hard to go into the store and buy the things we needed. It's why meals prepared by the House of Neighborly Service have doubled since January. Yet with food prices growing along with demand and no end in sight, Morales says they need as much support as possible, as well as volunteers. Gracias. For the sake of those like Steve Guzman. I'm just grateful to God, you know, for this place, you know, and Hopefully you'll continue for a long time. Thank you. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. 448. Let's check on the roadways and see what's happening. I know there's some activity on radar that could impact morning drivers. And there we go. There's the maps. But uh, so far, no sign of it just yet. Uh, but, you know, that can change in the blink of an eye. So uh, let's get to uh, some of the Transguide cameras. Right now, I-10 and Frio here in the downtown vicinity. Eastbound, westbound lanes where the upper and lower levels come back together. So far, no problems. You can clearly make out the downtown skyline from this point. And let's go forward, not backward. There we go. 604, no issues. And I'm the one pushing the buttons. If you take a look, you eastbound uh, Highway 151 exit ramp from 604, no problem. And then 35 is 604. Still have a little bit of that construction there just south of 35. Over there, 35 at Evans, far northeast side. No increases quite yet on the uh, volume of traffic. And uh, has anybody else noticed? 
slight upticks in the traffic since all this first started. Little by little. Yes, I that's did. starting to come back. So mm -hmm. might want to leave just a couple minutes earlier. Oh, so some pockets up on the north side, uh, mm -hmm. high traffic areas like Stone Oak, it seems it's, it's much closer to normal these days. Well, in areas like that, you just add one car and that jams everything. That's, that's true. true. That's true. E even just a little bit of afternoon traffic, you know, mm -hmm. going toward the grocery store. Last Saturday, I think it was, there seemed to be a whole lot more traffic. Yeah. So relative to none. Well, as we open more yeah. businesses Fridays, the governor says that, that more can. It's going to continue to increase. Yes, indeed. All right. This morning, as you were talking about, uh, there may be a little bit of weather to affect your commute if you are uh, commuting this morning. Yesterday, great looking sunset. Of course, we had that front move through, dried things out quite nicely. And usually, you know, that just kind of clears stuff out. But there is a disturbance which has moved on in here, kind of snuck in the back door, if you will. And now there's nothing showing up on radar right now over there, excuse me, on live cam. But on radar, there's a lot showing up, especially south of 10 and 90. And even a couple of uh, lightning strikes are being detected over there just to the east of uh, La Prior. And there were a few, there may still be one or two of them east of uh, Carn City. And there were a couple over by uh, Quero in town. And we were looking at the trans guide cameras. Marcus and I were, and nothing is showing up on the ground with that little batch of rain there on the uh, near northwest side town. That looks like it's about 410, maybe Bandera area. But again, on the ground, it doesn't look like there's anything actually reaching the ground. There's a few of these showers up to the north. Now, very quickly, down to the southwest there in southern uh, Maverick County, this is a radar estimate, but about uh, three and a half, four inches of rain, not a ground measurement, but just an indication that it was coming down hard and heavy. And that's why there's that flood advisory up until 530 for so extreme southern uh, Maverick County and that little tiny southwest corner of Dimmick County. 71 degrees here in town, 64 in Bernie. Temperatures are much milder than what we had expected for this morning because we do have some of that cloud cover out here, but the air is bone dry. Again, you've got about a 20, almost 25 degree difference between the temperature and the dew point temperature. So there's this very, very dry layer in the atmosphere, and that's why I think a lot of these showers, obviously some are reaching the ground, but a lot of these showers are not reaching the ground because the rain's evaporating before it has time to make it all the way down here to the surface. Wind is out of the northeast at uh, about uh, 5, 10, maybe close to 15 miles per hour. It's not going to be overly windy today. Here's the moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, and this is where some of those heavier downpours are, but there's not a lot up to the north, and so that's why a lot of these showers are going to continue to sort of fizzle out up to the north, and we'll continue to have a few of them through the morning hours, maybe even up to about noon, and then most of those are going to be getting on out of here. Now, we may actually have to watch out for something tomorrow afternoon way out to the west. There could be another one of these little sneaky things kind of trying to pop up, but uh, that'll be a wait-and-see situation as far as tomorrow is concerned. Today, most of the Cloudy skies and noon. We'll still have a couple leftover showers down to the south. We'll make it up to 80. Then I'm going for 85 degrees. Excuse me, that shouldn't say 85 degrees. A little typo right there. Northeasterly wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then 60 tomorrow morning. So we will have some clear skies. Um, off to the east, there could be a hint of fog tomorrow morning. Then we make it back up to 85 degrees. Friday, we are going to have a few showers and thunderstorms around here. Sunday, of course, is Mother's Day. And we'll have... Uh, little bit of uh, rain. My map did not update completely as far as the wording is concerned. Some rain early Saturday, and then we're going to have a beautiful day on Sunday, and it will be cool on Saturday. It was 77 degrees for a high temperature. Okay, still That's holding it. true so far. Yes, indeed. Thank you so Happy much. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, everybody. 453, 71 degrees. Up next, more on why actor Tom Cruise is trying to work with Elon Musk to get a new movie shot in space. Outer space really is the final frontier. When it comes to movie making, no one's made a movie above the planet. And now Tom Cruise apparently wants to change that. Deadline reports that Cruise is working with SpaceX founder Elon Musk to make the first ever narrative feature film shot in space. No real details yet about plot, co-stars, or release date, but the head of NASA tweeted that he's on board. YouTube getting in on the graduation event game, snagging former president and first lady Barack and Michelle Obama as the featured commencement speakers, as well as speeches from Lady Gaga, K-pop superstars BTS, and former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. The virtual celebration is meant to honor high school and college seniors whose graduations were canceled because of COVID-19. Dear Class of 2020 will stream live June 6th. A separate event May 15th on Facebook features Oprah Winfrey. Speaking of Michelle Obama, her documentary Becoming premieres today on Netflix. It goes behind the scenes with the former first lady on her recent book tour. 
Selena Gomez can do many things, but is cooking one of them? We'll find out with the new cooking show hosted by the singer for HBO Max, in which she'll cook meals from quarantine with a different celeb chef every week. And happy birthday, George Clooney, the Oscar-winning actor and producer, is 59 today, while Dancing with the Stars host Tom Bergeron is 65. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 71 degrees. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, the number of positive tests for COVID-19 in one South Texas community has some county leaders there a bit concerned. This was started out as a joke turning into a crime. How Zoom is working with federal officials to prosecute those accused of what's doing what's being called Zoom bombing. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, local hair salons, gyms and pools get ready to welcome people back as we approach the next phase of reopening Texas. Plus, why a small South Texas community is getting concerned about the rise in COVID-19 cases. And some of you may be waking up to a shower or storm this morning. Mike will get us updated on the chances of that as we continue to see a cooling trend. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It is May 6th. Don't forget Mother's Day is Sunday, so don't forget about uh, spoiling mom on Sunday. And it looks like Mother Nature is going to bless moms with a beautiful day. Mike? Yeah, Sunday is still looking fantastic. It'll be cooler on Saturday. Now we're going to... Yeah. This morning and we had this little disturbance kind of sneak in the back door in behind that front that moved through yesterday and it came around overnight. And so that's why we do have some uh, rain out there right now. First of all, 71 degrees. We're not as cool as what we expected because also have obviously some cloud cover out there. And so that's helping to hold temperatures up a little bit. Some mid 60s in portions of the hill country. But look at that top number. The dew points down to 49 degrees. So the temperature and the dew point temperature about a 20 degree difference right now. So with that in mind, there's a, obviously a very dry layer in the atmosphere, and I think a lot of this may be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. Obviously, we do have some more intense uh, showers and even a couple of thunderstorms, and those are reaching the ground. And don't be surprised if maybe there's a little bit of a tiny, perhaps pea-sized hail. Haven't seen anything on radar up to this point, but the way these storms are kind of setting up, there could be just one or two little uh, spots of uh, maybe a some small hail mixed in with some of these uh, storms. Here in town, we've uh, just got an alert on my phone from the uh, KSAT app, and it said there was some moderate rain detected in the area, and it may be picking up some of these uh, showers and storms over there by Hondo. We've been watching TransGuide, and none of this is really showing up on any of the uh, the cameras around town as of right now. So like I said, a lot may be evaporating before it reaches the ground. There's a couple of leftover showers up there to the north, but the majority of it obviously is in the uh, southern half of our viewing area. So I'll have a flood advisory for the next 45 minutes. Extreme southern uh, Maverick County and southwestern Dimmit County picked up uh, some estimates three and a half to four inches of rain down there. So we've got these temperatures that are still on the above normal side, but it's very pleasant out there with this dry air. Mold and grass are both on the low side and throughout the rest of today, showers and a couple of storms, mainly in the southern half of our viewing area. Those will continue to kind of work their way down and stick around maybe through the uh, about noontime hour uh, scattered about there and then partly cloudy skies. Mid 80s, a comfortable day. Mostly sunny tomorrow, mid 80s again. Uh, there could be something trying to sneak in late tomorrow or in, even in the evening hours as well out to the west. We'll have to watch that as far as a couple of showers. And then Friday, showers, thunderstorms as the front passes on through here. Some leftover rain Saturday morning, and then it looks fantastic Saturday afternoon and Mother's Day. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo, and the question is, have you seen any of these showers anywhere around town on TransGuide? Not yet. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed, not yet. Uh, we could certainly use the rain. However, uh, we would prefer the uh, driving conditions that offers more traction versus less traction. But we'll take what we can get. Right now, as you can see, the map shows no incidents out there. As we take a look through a couple of TransGuide cameras, I-10 and Callahan. Something there on the lens. It could just be residue from uh, previous incidents, but uh, nothing that visible on the ground. I-10 and Frio still looking pretty good for the inbound outbound lanes. With no problems, I-10 at 1604. Just... Keep in mind, if you're outbound on I-10, you will have that construction to to deal with. And 6 and Coleta, no issues there. Leslie? Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police say three people were hurt in a shooting overnight. This is on the east side. SAPD says around 11 p.m., a maroon-colored SUV pulled up to a house with a group of people in the front yard. 
and several suspects started shooting. Afterward, police say a man in his 30s was taken to the hospital in critical condition. He had a gunshot wound to the stomach. SAPD says a 90-year-old woman and 20-year-old woman also grazed by gunfire. They're expected to be okay. Police are still looking for suspects. We'll have more in a live report coming up at 5.30. Well, starting this Friday, cosmetology businesses will be allowed to operate as long as they keep workstations six feet apart. Texas Governor Greg Abbott recommends salons use an appointment-only system. Tanning salons and swimming pools will also be allowed to reopen Friday with restrictions. Then 10 days later, Monday, May 18th, gyms will be allowed to reopen at 25% of their total occupancy. Locker rooms and shower facilities must remain closed. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg expressed concerns about how soon this next phase, uh, the reopenings, is coming. And I think one of the challenges is we don't know the impacts of choices we make in terms of opening activities and loosening social distancing for two or three weeks after we make them. So steps taken in succession without the benefit of data to reinforce the decision is really a, a, a risk that we're taking without a whole lot of um, awareness. Meanwhile, the city's economic transition team has made its own recommendations on how to reopen safely in its latest report. One of the biggest is a marketing campaign that includes a Greater Safer Together pledge that businesses can sign in to help instill confidence in consumers. The pledge means these businesses are taking proper precautions. The economic transition team's report also includes a checklist for businesses in numerous industries to guide them on the best ways to reopen. Let's check on COVID cases. When it comes to areas surrounding Bear County, Hayes County jumped up to 183 cases. Guadalupe County reporting 87. Comal County has 59. Wilson reporting 34. Atascosa County is at 19, while Medina County increased to 20. We're also tracking these numbers on our website at ksat.com. In Frio County, the number of positive tests for COVID-19 in the South Texas community of Pearsall has some county leaders there concerned. Latest count is at 10. Those leaders tell our Paul Venema their concern goes beyond the actual numbers. The single largest employer here is this privately run South Texas Ice Processing and Detention Center. It houses over a thousand undocumented immigrants. Seven of the county's 10 reported cases of COVID-19 surfaced here. Seven detainees and three employees, according to the city manager. He said it's not just those numbers that are concerning to the public and to local leaders. I believe there's, the concern is again on our end is is just they, they want to be able to have good, solid, valid information. And that, according to at least one county commissioner, is often difficult to get in a timely manner. His constituency said, want answers. They're just demanding answers, and they're demanding answers from the people who hold them, which is GEO. He is talking about the GEO Group, a private Florida-based company that operates the facility. I'm not comfortable at all with the reporting procedures. It's something we have to work on. An issue, he said, that's frustrating. The one thing I've never wanted to say to a constituent is there's nothing we can do. That's the feeling that I have right now, and it's so frustrating. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, thanks to the latest order by Governor Abbott, Harlandale ISD will be one of the first and few San Antonio area school districts to hold an in-person graduation at Memorial Stadium. The community will be able to celebrate the class of 2020 graduations on June 1st, 2nd and 3rd. There are some restrictions and additional screening guidelines that are in place. The number of guests will be limited and social distancing procedures will continue to apply. Each high school will communicate their plans for seniors, including cap and gown distributions. 508, 71 degrees. So ahead, vacation home rental company Airbnb is the latest business facing layoffs thanks to COVID-19. And next morning, how Duncan is offering nurses a deal for their hard work during the pandemic. And taking a look outside with live cam, we do have storms in our area. But uh, Mike's tracking for you. He'll have an update. Your time now, 12 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, an online real estate database is letting its employees work from home for the rest of the year. The co-founder and CEO of the Zillow Group posted about the change on Twitter. Zillow is known for listing properties for sale and rent from its website. Employees will have the flexibility to choose where they want to work through the end of 2020. Rideshare app Lyft is pausing its carpool option for now and unveiling a new program called Wait and Save. Lyft riders can now opt for a longer wait time to be picked up and pay a lower fee. 
Before the pandemic, Lyft allowed customers to share rides with other people for a cheaper fare. But with distancing rules, the company has temporarily nixed that program. Lyft says the new wait and save option is rolling out 90 cities this week. Company spokesperson says wait times and prices of the rides will vary by time of day and area. Duncan is celebrating National Nurses Week with some freebies for those on the front lines. The restaurant chain will give any healthcare worker a free medium coffee and a donut today. No purchase is necessary and the coffee can be hot or iced. Most Duncan locations are open with limited carryout and drive through ordering. Duncan has also deployed food trucks and deliveries to various hospitals and emergency sites around the country. Well, there you have it. We were talking about how Duncan was ch taking donuts out of their name because they say there's so much more than uh, but donuts now. Yes, that's and true. Coffee and all the other stuff. And thanks to those first responders. Yes, amen. 513, 71 degrees on your Wednesday morning. Still ahead, we have a preview of Space Force. It's a new satirical series from Netflix starring comedian Steve Carell. And next, more on how Zoom is working with the FBI to help prosecute individuals participating in what's called Zoom bombing. To all of you doing your part, on the front lines or at home, turning those living rooms into gyms, getting creative in the kitchen, taking a minute for yourself, and trying to get a good night's sleep. Thank you for doing what you can. We're all in this together. So here's a little something to help. Every day, women get their best ideas in the shower. Caress immerses your senses with silk extract and floral oil essence. Get glowing skin and let your magic happen. Caress, inspiration starts here. When migraine strikes, there's new quick dissolve Nurtec. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. Pay as little as zero dollars. Learn more at Nurtec.com. Just about 517, Zoom working with the FBI to help prosecute people who are participating in so-called Zoom bombing. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Zoom and federal investigators are teaming up. The company confirms to ABC News that it's working with the FBI to track down people who are taking part in Zoom bombing when hackers crash a video conference and spew hateful language. There have been countless incidents since the pandemic started. Airbnb is getting rid of one quarter of its workforce. The company announced it's slashing 1,900 jobs worldwide, one of the largest Silicon Valley layoffs during this outbreak. The CEO cited a potential 50% drop in revenue compared to last year. And your next Tinder date could be virtual. The dating app is adding the video chat later this year. Tinder says the average number of daily messages climbed by 27% in April, so many people finding love during a pandemic. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. We're going to check on weather in just a moment. But right now we want to check on the roadways. Marcus, what's happening? Well, still no issues out there as far as uh, accidents are concerned. Now we do have a little bit of construction here and there. So first, let's get to this one. We're moving over to Ralph Fair Road, itinerary. You see the flashing lights there for all those uh, construction vehicles. Also, getting word that... Uh, Trans or TxDOT rather has some construction if you're on 410 just south of Highway 90 right now the northbound lanes close as you're approaching 410 also for construction. Let's take a look at some other areas. I-10 and Crossroads so far no issues there and Tweedy Winter Grace and north and southbound lanes here just outside the downtown vicinity look great. 37 and Jones Avenue no problems and then 35 at 410 north and southbound lanes still running smoothly so currently no delays in anyone's travel times but uh, I think this, let's see if I can get the right camera. Nope, that one. That one there, Mike and I have kind of been watching this. Little hazy to that shot, but doesn't appear to be wet road, so not really sure. Just taking a look at it. Yeah, we've been looking around the trains got all morning long, and because my, my theory is, my guess is that a lot of the rain, uh, except for the really heavy downpours down south, may be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Well, so. case in point, the, yeah. I mean, it's dry as a bone here in the downtown area. Uh, I'm going to show you radar in a second, and then okay. show you some of the, the numbers. First of all, I love this picture, this uh, Bougainvillea. It's a pink one, but 
came out a little bit on the lavender sides. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Great seeing all the uh, we could use some rain, by the way, as far as all of our flowers and lawns are concerned. We do have some a little bit better chance Friday into Saturday. More on that in a second out there uh, looking off to the northwest by the airport. Nothing is showing up and obviously south of basically 90 and 10 is where the majority of the uh, showers, even a couple of thunderstorms are right around La Prior. A couple of lightning strikes are being detected just uh, entering now Atascosa County and some around Carn City. And there were a couple of down around uh, Goalie ad and uh, a couple of decent spots of some some rain here and there. And this is obviously reaching the ground, but some of these showers that were showing up uh, in and around town, we never saw anything that hit the ground. So with temperatures on the warmer side and the air so dry, that's why, like I said, I'm speculating that a lot of it is evaporating before it reaches the ground. For the next uh, about uh, half an hour or so, 15, 20 minutes, we do have a uh, flood advisory for extreme southern Maverick County, extreme southwestern Dimmit County. Some radar estimates were anywhere from three and a half to four inches of rain because these thunderstorms were just sitting right there for a long time. 71 in town, 69 Balverde, mid 60s hill country. We're not as cool as what we expected just because those clouds kind of moved on in here. I can like a bit of a blanket. Then you look at these numbers. So you step outside. It's really comfortable when you walk outside because the humidity really dropped down in behind that front that moved through yesterday. And so with the difference between the air temperature and these numbers is basically 20, 25 degrees, which is a really, really dry layer of air down here at the surface. So a lot of that rain, once it hits that, it evaporates before it ever reaches the ground. Uh, winds out of the northeast still uh, shifted around in behind that front yesterday. And so that's what's pulling down the dry air. Computer model. Now, it pretty much, or excuse me, here's the radar and satellite loop, beg your pardon. And it shows how, first of all, that front that moved through late yesterday still had some of those thunderstorms down to the southeast. And then all of a sudden, this disturbance decided to kind of sneak in the back door. And that's what has produced some of these showers and even a couple of uh, thunderstorms. They'll be sticking around throughout the first portion of the day. And then computer models have everything just kind of getting on out of here by later on today. So we're looking at a good looking afternoon more couple of clouds down to the south and more sunshine further up to the north. So I'm still going to call it mostly cloudy skies. I think we'll have a lot of leftover clouds, especially down to the south. 80 at noon and then a high temperature today up to that did not update. I beg your pardon. I'm going to have to work on that 85 degrees. Sometimes these computers are finicky. Uh, 60 tomorrow morning and then 85 once again. May have to watch out for something trying to sneak in again late tomorrow, especially in our western counties. And then Friday, as the next front approaches, we'll see a return of the humidity, and that's going to help with some uh, showers and a couple of more thunderstorms around here. Some of those will hang around into early Saturday morning, then we'll start to clear out. Temperature is going to be in the uh, mid to maybe upper 70s on Saturday, low 50s starting off Sunday, getting up into the low 80s, plenty of sunshine. Thank you, Mike. Good mm -hmm. to see you, sir. 522 with 71 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, more on how a legendary songwriter is helping felines find their forever homes. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, three, two, four, Fireball six. Your daily four numbers, eight, three, eight, six, Fireball eight. And your Mega Million members, 7, 13, 17, I think we skipped one, but 21, 45, 14 was the Mega Ball, Mega Player of two. And there you go, cash five numbers, 18, 21, 22, 27, and 31. Five twenty-five. We're reaching for the stars in today's entertainment report. We don't just mean movie stars. CNN's David Daniel explains in your Hollywood Minute. You know, I'd never try to top. I'm just trying to make the best movie I can. Tom Cruise may be headed for the very top, outer space. The head of NASA says the space agency and the actor are working to make a movie aboard the International Space Station. And a NASA spokesperson confirms Cruise will spend time on the ISS. No word when or how he'll head to orbit. Space should be a zone of wonder, not of conflict and death. The scientists who have a loyalty to reason makes you a little untrustworthy. How much was that prototype? Four million? Middle schools. Cost as much as four new middle schools. Speaking of space, here's your first look at Steve Carell and John Malkovich in Space Force, a new satirical series from Netflix. 
The mock militarization of the final frontier debuts May 29th. That's one of my favorites. Diane Warren is helping felines find forever homes. The legendary songwriter made a $25,000 matching pledge for Giving Tuesday Now to the Stray Cat Alliance, which works to rescue cats, find them homes, and push for no-kill shelters. Maybe Warren will even write a song about it. Let's see, what rhymes with unbearably cute? In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check now 527. We're at 71 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour of GMSA, a few months after the White House Coronavirus Task Force made its debut, big changes are coming. We have the details. It's more on why a senior government scientist claiming that the Trump administration failed to prepare for the onslaught of the coronavirus. And what's true and not true about these so-called murder hornets we've been hearing about? We're going to talk to a local insect expert. Good morning, rise and shine. It's Wednesday, May 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. So you've kind of had an interesting morning, Mike, because radar looks like there's showers on there, but you're not really seeing any wet roads. No, not in and around town. Some areas now, for instance, uh, I'm going to show you this in a second, down around uh, southern uh, Maverick County, way down to the uh, southwest and extreme southwestern Dimmit County, picked up almost four inches of rain. So a lot of it was hitting the ground there, but some of this is, I think, evaporating before it reaches the ground. Now we've got Everything basically south of 90 and 10. Obviously, a few uh, you know scattered showers up there to the north, and even a couple of lightning strikes are uh, showing up with some of these. And don't be surprised, even though I haven't seen anything on radar yet, if there's a little bit of tiny pea-sized hail with some of these storms. That would be the exception rather than the rule, but just not to be uh, surprised by it if indeed it does happen. Some of these uh, thunderstorms down around Carn City, also moving into western uh, Atascosa County, and over there by La Prior. This cell almost appears to be perhaps getting a little bit uh, stronger right there in western Atascosa County and that one little spot there in southern Bear County. Otherwise, we did have a couple of these showers that moved across the northwest side. Uh, looked like around, say, 410 Bandera Road, but we never saw anything showing up on Transguide, which is why I think a lot of this may be evaporating before it reaches the ground because we have temperatures that are in the mid upper 60s, low 70s, not quite as cool as what was expected because the cloud cover moved in, kind of put a blanket on things. But the air is really, really dry, so you step outside, it's, it's extremely comfortable. And with that dry layer of air, like I said, I think a lot may be evaporating, uh, except obviously some of those heavier storms. Mold and grass are both on the low side, and we're going to be seeing still a couple of leftover showers and a couple of thunderstorms down to the south throughout the next few hours this morning. And then we are going to make it up to uh, 85 degrees today for a high temperature. Partly cloudy skies, still a very, very nice day. Tomorrow looks like a good day as well. Then we have kind of setting things up for the next front to move on through here, which may include some more rain and that's approaching the weekend. Mother's Day still looks good just to kind of jump ahead there. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on yet, Marcus? Well, right now as we take a look, Mike, things uh, still look pretty good. You can see that uh, no delays in anyone's travel time. So the map showing green on all the highways. Let's take a look at a couple of Transguy cameras. Definitely more traffic there. Highway 151 at 410. And we're seeing uh, slight increases, 35 at Benzingham in both directions. Right now as we move over 35, 37, the downtown area, so far, no problems there. Leslie? Thanks, Marcus. San Antonio police say gunfire broke up a gathering outside an east side, uh, east side home. Three people suffered gunshot wounds. They say the shots came from a car passing by the home on Belinda Lee Street, not far from W.W. W. White and Interstate 10. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters, and we understand the victims included an elderly woman, Katrina? That's right. Police say a 90-year-old woman was grazed by a bullet, as was another woman in her 20s. That's according to police. They say that the most serious victim was a man who was uh, critically wounded, shot in his belly. And police did find all three of them there at that home in the 4600 block of Belinda Lee. Those pe people there told officers that there were several people gathered in the front yard when the car, a maroon SUV, pulled up around 11 last night and more than one person inside it started shooting. The 90 year old woman and the other woman both were treated there at the scene. Police say the older woman was grazed on her forehead while the other woman had a graze wound to her arm. 
The man who's in his 30s had to be rushed to a hospital again in critical condition. And it sounds as though the only information that police have on the shooters at this time is their vehicle, that maroon colored SUV. But they were questioning other people there, hoping for more information. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. As dozens of states start to reopen, the Trump administration announces a planned closure. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, a task force that focuses on the COVID-19 pandemic is expected to be phased out within the next few weeks. The coronavirus task force will start winding down around Memorial Day, according to a senior White House official. We're now looking at a little bit of a different form, and that form is safety and opening, and we'll... Uh, We'll have a different group probably set up for that. Critics were quick to attack the decision. This president, his, he's got a lot of problems. One of his biggest is he runs away from truth. And oversight is truth. President Trump admits the coronavirus death toll could climb over the next few months. It's possible there will be some because you won't be locked into an apartment or a, or a house or whatever it is. But at the same time, we're going to practice social distancing. Some say the expected rise in confirmed cases is why the task force should remain in place. We just had one of the deadliest months in American history in April. We're on track to kind of match it again in May. A second administration official says the White House is now focusing more on boosting the U.S. economy and putting Americans back to work. We don't have to make the mistake the other countries made where you go from closed to open. There's an intelligent calibration that can be done by watching the data and then calibrating your actions. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Also making headlines this morning, police in Las Vegas say a man armed with a sword was shot and killed late yesterday. Investigators say they received a disturbance call and found the suspect yelling from an outside staircase. The man reportedly ignored, ignored rather, the officers told him to put down the sword. Police said the suspect walked towards them aggressively and that's when he was shot. The uh, unknown man was pronounced dead at a Las Vegas area hospital. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg expected to participate in oral arguments via video from the hospital this morning. That after the court says she underwent a medical procedure yesterday. According to a statement from the court, Ginsburg had a non-surgical treatment for a benign gallbladder condition. Tests found a gallstone was causing an infection. She will probably be in the hospital for a couple of days, but she is reportedly resting comfortably. 536, 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we hear from a local bug expert about the facts and the myths of the so-called murder hornets. They're swarming in headlines this week. And more on why a senior government scientist saying the Trump administration didn't do enough to prepare for the pandemic. And live cam giving us a look outside. Mother's Day weekend is going to turn out to be fantastic. Mike has all the great details coming up. Just about 540, the scientist who was in charge of finding a coronavirus vaccine is criticizing the Trump administration. In a new complaint, Dr. Rick Bright says his warnings about the virus were ignored. ABC's Alex Prochet has the details. This morning, a senior government scientist is claiming the Trump administration failed to prepare for the coronavirus before touting an unproven drug as a quick fix. I was pressured to let politics and cronyism drive decisions over the opinions of the best scientists we have in government. Dr. Rick Bright had been the head scientist overseeing the production of a vaccine. In a whistleblower complaint, he claims he was assigned to a lesser role after resisting widespread use of hydroxychloroquine, a malaria drug pushed by President Trump. I witnessed government leadership rushing blindly into a potentially dangerous situation by bringing in a non-FDA approved chloroquine from Pakistan and India from facilities that had never been approved by the FDA. Bright also claims his superiors rejected his warnings about the spread of the virus, missing an early opportunity to stock up on critical supplies. In response, the Department of Health and Human Services says Bright was transferred to work on coronavirus testing. And the department said, we are deeply disappointed that he has not shown up to work on behalf of the American people and lead on this critical endeavor. In the meantime, President Trump's nominee for Inspector General of Pandemic Relief Funds answered questions on Capitol Hill Tuesday. Brian Miller is a former lawyer in the White House Counsel's Office. If confirmed, he would oversee part of the $2 trillion stimulus package. He vowed to be independent. I will conduct every audit and investigation with fairness and impartiality. 
I will be vigilant to protect the integrity and independence of the Office of Special Inspector General. Alex Bershay, ABC News, Washington. It is now 541, still 71 degrees. Having up next, what's really true about the so-called murder hornets making their way to the United States? We're going to hear from an insect expert coming up next. Hi, 44. Well, if you've been online or social media in the past few days, chances are you have heard about the so-called murder hornet. Why did they have to name it that? The insect has made its way into the United States for the first time ever. RJ Marquez spoke with a local expert to see if this giant hornet can make its way to South Texas. It's about two inches long, but it's causing a big buzz across the country. The Asian giant hornet is now in the U.S., in the Pacific Northwest. The New York Times reported it can wipe out honeybee hives with its potent venom and stinger. It's the reason it was given the name, the murder hornet. It can kill off an entire bee colony, which is pretty amazing considering that you'll have 60,000 plus honeybees in a healthy colony. Molly Keck is an entomologist with the Texas AgriLife Extension in Bayer County. She says there have been discussions about the hornet for months. The Texas Beekeepers Association had been talking about it. That had kind of been on the radar for the next big pest that was going to arrive. Keck says the murder hornet, like many invasive species, may have come to the U.S. on a cargo ship. The next step is seeing how it adapts to the weather. What I hope is that it's just too cold where they are right now and they're not used to that weather and then they die off over the winter time and they don't become endemic here. If the hornet survives the colder months, it could become an issue in southern states, including ours, where the weather is warmer. It's more likely that they would make it south as opposed to starting south and traveling up north. And if their host or, or their primary food source for their offspring are honeybees, there are plenty of hives all over the United States. Honeybees are vital to our ecosystem, especially in South Texas. Our food supply would be disrupted without them. We just simply wouldn't have the amount of food, variety of food that we have. We use honeybees primarily to pollinate agricultural crops. The other major concern is stings to humans. The hornets reportedly kill about 50 people a year in Japan. Researchers say they can even sting through a bee suit. They're so large that I would just think the amount of venom they can give you at one time is, is much more than you would get from a single bee or even a handful of our regular wasps. South Texas is already home to some pretty big insects. We have cicada killer wasps, which are, a, which are about like a two inch, inch and a half wasp. So we have some big guys. Hey, right now we don't have it in Texas, so there's no reason to really be overly concerned. I'm Margie Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Well, the pandemic has two plant-based meat makers earning a lot of green. Beyond Meat Incorporated and Impossible Foods are benefiting from the outbreak after been a lack of beef and pork products due to the pandemic. Beyond Meat reported fiscal first quarter results that shot way past Wall Street estimates. As shares have gone up 85% since mid-March. Impossible Foods says its food items will now be available at 1,700 grocery stores. And a new problem for some car dealers. They need more pickup trucks. Dealers across the country say the long-term no-interest loans offered during the pandemic led to a surge in customers wanting pickups. They say inventories still haven't recovered. That's after a strike at General Motors. Check traffic at 547. Marcus, what's happening on the roadways? Well, as we take a look at the uh, map so far, still no incidents in Transguide. Looking pretty good. Now we are seeing increases in the traffic. Highway 151 there at 410. A good reminder, we're still under the stay home, work safe. And with that, causes a whole nother gamut of issues. So if you're stuck at home, but home isn't safe, don't forget, there are people that you can reach out to. Of course, there's the National <coughs> Domestic Violence Hotline, 1-800-799-SAFE. If you're inside the state of San Antonio, you can also call the non-emergency number, 210-207-SAPD. You can always reach out to your local police department if you live outside the city of San Antonio. If this is an urgent a need an emergency you can always dial 911 no matter where you are but don't forget it's this doesn't just apply to you but maybe you know someone who's stuck at home or feeling and we joked about it uh, earlier in the week monday one of the parents driving around in the neighborhood has on their window with the, those white uh, markers put on there uh teachers you lied my son is or my kid is not a joy to have at home <laughs> in class in, or in classroom. so you know it's it's different for everybody everybody's having to make adjustments and it's stressful for the kids as well so if you know somebody who has kids or you know the kids are stressing out, give us a call, give someone a call, let someone There's know. There's help out there. There's help.
There's lots of resources available to all kinds of folks. Okay, and a friendly reminder for our friends over at the Humane Society. Yeah, shifting gear, gears, I should say. Here's some uh, photos and videos of some of the uh, Humane Society shelter pups having a little fun in the sun. They want to remind everybody about the emergency fund, the Amazon wish list, and the no contact adoption process. Now, they are looking for any help you can give so they can continue their mission to help, of course, as many animals as possible in our area and to donate to the San Antonio Emergency Fund. Check out sahumane.org org slash COVID-19. You can also donate needed items from their Amazon wish list or drop off donations in their blue bin located outside the shelter front doors 4804 Fredericksburg Road 226-7461. Great thing about the Amazon wish list, everything they need, you know, if it's this size bowl or whatever, they get them all two couple of clicks and done. Off it goes, goes right to them. That's and it's great. a good cause. Yes, it is. And if you want to adopt, there's plenty of them out there. And then you can take a little walk in the evening with your newfound friend and enjoy a scene like this. As Mr. Childers always likes to say, God's handiwork. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, looking outside out to the uh, northwest, there's nothing going on. So we don't have any, uh, any rain showing up anywhere in town right now. Obviously, most of the rain is well down to the uh, south. Now, just uh, kind of zooming in here, and earlier this morning, as you can see, as those thunderstorms were just pounding extreme southern uh, Maverick County and southwestern uh, Dimmit County, and there was a flood advisory that was allowed to expire. And we do have a couple of, uh, obviously, some uh, a couple of decent cells here. This one appears to be kind of holding together right there in western Atascosa County. Even a couple of uh, thunderstorm or lightning strikes down around Carn City. And this one may actually, there could be a little bit of pea-sized tail with some of these storms. So just something to kind of keep in mind. It'd be the exception rather than the rule, but just don't be surprised by it. And then in southern Bear County, obviously this one uh, tends to be kind of rearing its head a little bit more as well. Now, some of these showers I don't think are actually reaching the ground. We've been scanning all the trans guide cameras. Marcus and I have all morning long and we haven't seen any wet roads out there despite radar showing some of those showers being picked up. And the reason for that would be the fact that temperatures and dew point temperatures, there's a huge, huge difference. So there's a really dry layer of air here at the surface and going up a couple of thousand feet. And so that's why a lot of this rain may be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. Going back 12 hours, we had the front move through and that touched off a few showers and storms there along the uh, the coastal plain and it pulled in the drier air throughout the day yesterday. So it was delightful yesterday afternoon and it's still very nice when you step outside this morning. Then this other disturbance kind of snuck in in behind it and that's what has been producing some of these showers and storms. Everything will continue to work its way down to the south. A few of these leftover showers in uh, basically south of 90 and 10 throughout the rest of the morning and then by later on this afternoon we are going to have uh, partly cloudy skies and it's going to be nice looking and the humidity is still going to be on the low side throughout the rest of today tomorrow as well. But then as we go through the day tomorrow, then we start to see the humidity coming back in here later tomorrow and into Friday. That's then setting us up for the next front to move through during the day on Friday. So as that approaches and comes through, we'll have more rain around here Friday, maybe early on Saturday. 80 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies, still a couple leftover showers uh, scattered about down to the south, and then 85 for a high temperature. So a delightful day again. Northeasterly wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, start off at 60. And then we get up to 85 in the afternoon, mostly sunny skies. Now, again, we start off very comfortable. Humidity is going to start to work its way in here. Friday, we'll have showers and thunderstorms around the area. And the front's going to move through about midday, early to uh, mid-afternoon. And that'll hold temperatures about 80, 77 on Saturday. Morning rain, we start to clear out. Beautiful on Mother's Day. Nice, cool start. 82 degrees in the afternoon. I, I since we're in May, I didn't think we'd see low 50s anymore. You're we're not surprised. complaining, though. I, I didn't think we'd be talking about two fronts within, what, uh, four Span days, of days of each other? It's yeah. all for mom. Thank you, Mike. With a bow on top. Yeah, exactly. 553, 71 degrees. Coming up next, more on that five-year-old boy who was pulled over on a Utah, Utah rather highway and told troopers he was just driving to California to buy a Lamborghini. Five years old. Five years old, people. Pick three numbers, three, two, four, fireball six. Daily four numbers, eight, three, eight, six, fireball eight. And you're, what? He only had $3 in his pocket. But he was going right. to train at his parents' Lexus, I think. Yes, I still don't think that's enough. Anyway, your cash five is 18, 21, 22, 27, 31. 
and Magnolian 713, 17, 21, 45. Your Mega Ball is 14, Mega Plier is 2. Coming up on GMA, the ABC News exclusive, President Trump one-on-one -on -one with World News Tonight anchor David Muir. The president acknowledging that opening up the economy may cost lives and saying that he thinks that the virus will pass with or without a vaccine. This as the new poll shows that the majority of Americans are afraid that the country is opening too soon. You'll see it right here on GMA. Well, here's the story we were just chatting about. A five-year-old boy named Adrian who drove a car on a Utah highway is making headlines. His teenage sister dozed off while she was supposed to be watching him. That's when the little boy took the opportunity to drive to California with one mission in mind, to buy a Lamborghini. Needless to say, he didn't make it that far before a state trooper foiled his plan. His family says he's always loved cars, but they didn't even know he figured out how to drive an actual car. Meanwhile, little Adrian now getting some offers from people to ride in a real Lamborghini. And as we mentioned, he had about $3 in his pocket, but he was determined to go get that Lamborghini. He's a lucky little boy that he's okay. But can you imagine seeing all that during a traffic stop? Those troopers were astonished. We'll still have the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. Having a full lawn means you need to answer the question, sod or seed? Take a look at which could be the best choice for you. And trans guys still on the lookout for a shower or storm out there that could uh, get the pavement wet around here in the South Texas area. Mike and Marcus will both get us updated after this break. A shooting near San Antonio College ends with one man with a gunshot wound to his chest and an officer who was responding having a medical episode. I'm Max Massey, all of the details. The class of 2020 has been given the green light to walk the stage and the celebration itself may look a little different, but school districts like Harlem Dell ISD says an in-person celebration is happening. All the details just ahead on GMSA. And live cam giving us a look outside. It is your Wednesday, halfway through the work week. We have a big weekend for moms coming up this weekend and looks like we're gonna have a good looking forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Wednesday, May 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. It looked like we were going to get some rain this morning, according to radar, but we really didn't see any. Mike joins us now with a look at radar and the situation out there. You said the problem is these storms are very widely scattered and it's really dry down here closer to the surface. Now, to qualify it, obviously some folks have gotten some rain uh, down around mm -hmm. Southern Maverick County, for instance, about four inches worth. And wow. there's some of these heavier spots that where the rain is reaching the ground. But a lot of it, I think, uh, as we we're talking about is evaporating before it reaches the ground because we haven't we've had some showers showing up on radar that have moved through town, but haven't seen anything on any of the trans guide cameras. So here's what's going on right now. Yes, very scattered showers around here. A couple of lightning strikes. A lot of the lightning. Well, there's one being detected there just to the west of Pearsall, uh, right around Carn City. This cell which had looked like it might have been growing has now been weakening, but this one seems to be developing here in Southern Bear County, moving in toward Wilson County and right along Atascosa County, just crossing uh, 37 and 281. So now obviously these more intense downpours, those are the ones that are reaching the ground, but a lot of this light stuff, we had a few showers that showed up and we, like I said, never saw anything on radar. So uh, a good majority of this has been evaporating. We're at 70 right now, 64 Bernie, 66 in Bandera. But then you look at, you know, we always talk about the dew point temperatures and that's how humid the air might be, or that's how it, we factor in how humid the air is. Dew point temperatures are about 20, 25 degrees lower than what these numbers are right now. So that's why we have this very dry layer of air in here. And that's why a lot of this rain may be evaporating. Mold and grass are both on the low side temperatures. I think we may drop down another couple of degrees. It's not as cool this morning as what we thought it was going to be yesterday because of the cloud cover that moved on in here acted like a bit of a blanket. Wind is out of the northeast and it's very comfortable when you step outside because of that really dry air. We will make it up to 76 degrees today at noon. Still some clouds left over a couple of showers well down to the south and then a high temperature up to 85 partly cloudy skies and again a really really pleasant day today with this low humidity. Tomorrow's going to be starting off very nice. Then the humidity comes back in here. Some more rain chances. Keep your fingers crossed for that. And then as uh, Ms. Mouton was alluding to, good looking Mother's Day. Details Yay. coming up.
time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. And so I haven't seen any looking at some of the transit guide cameras. No wet roads out there. No sign of any wet okay. roads, but just now coming in so look, looking at the detail, details just as you were giving your forecast. We do have a major accident on the access road of I-10. So not on the main lanes, but on the access road of I-10 right there in Martin Luther King. That is a uh, two vehicle accident. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that. Other areas looking pretty good. This is 3537, the downtown interchange here. You can see no issues for the northbound or southbound lanes of 35 and then 37 going across your screen. So far, things look pretty good there. Leslie. New this morning, one man is in the hospital, two others injured after a shooting on the east side. It happened around 11 o'clock last night in the 4600 block of Belinda Lee, which is near South WW White in East Houston. Police say a red SUV pulled up in front of a house and several people inside started to open fire. A man in his 30s was shot in the stomach. He's in critical condition at Bamsey. Two women, one in her 90s, the other in her 20s, were grazed by bullets. EMS treated them on the scene. Our Katrina Weber will have more on this story in our next half hour. Two men are in their hospital this morning after shots rang out near San Antonio College late last night. Police say one is the gunshot victim, the other a responding officer who had a medical episode while on the way to the scene. Max Massey joins us live downtown. Max, can you explain exactly what happened here, please? Good morning, guys. Well, police tell us just before 10 a.m., gunfire rang out here in the 1400 block of North Main. And when they arrived, they found a man in his 20s with a gunshot wound to his chest. So let's take a look at the video from last night. This was the scene that police responded to at about 9.50 p.m. Investigators say that that man was shot near the park next to these apartments. They found one gunshot shell casing in the street. Now, that victim actually able to get back to his apartment. That's where he called 911 for help. Here's where it gets kind of complicated, though. In Alamo College's police officer was responding because technically this area is their jurisdiction. The sergeant on the scene tells us that officer who was responding had a heart attack on the way to the scene. He sideswiped several vehicles on Dewey near McCullough after he had that medical incident. He was found and transported to Metro in critical condition. As for that gunshot victim, all we know right now, a man in his 20s and at last check, transported to Bamsey in critical condition. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Max. A local food truck owner can now start to put his her business back together. Becky Priest is the owner of Top Notch Diner Food Truck. Her trailer was stolen over the weekend. It was found yesterday in Seguin after she put out a call for help on social media. Seguin police tried to pull over the thief, but he took them on a 30-minute chase with a trailer in tow. Now she has the trailer back. There is some damage and some items missing, but she says she's grateful for the help she got online and is looking forward to getting her business up and running again. Bear County deputies need your help finding a driver who hit and killed another man with a car. Deputies say the driver hit this man, 26-year-old Antonio Marquez, on 1604 near Shoeworth back on April 16th. That's on the far east side. They say the driver was in a red 2015 Toyota Avalon that was damaged on the passenger side. They say the passenger side mirror is missing. If you see the vehicle and you know anything about this case, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Barber shops and nail salons will be able to open this Friday across the state of Texas. Governor Greg Abbott made that announcement yesterday in his press conference. He also says gyms will be able to start reopening on May 18th. However, all businesses will still need to practice social distancing and limit capacity to 25 percent. Local leaders are criticizing the move. They say it's coming too quickly. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the state should allow more time to learn how each reopening phase will impact coronavirus cases. And thanks to the latest order by the governor, Harlandale ISD will be one of the first and few San Antonio area school districts to hold an in-person graduation at Memorial Stadium. The community will be able to celebrate the class of 2020 graduation on June 1st, 2nd and 3rd. Some restrictions and additional screening guidelines will be put in place. The number of guests limited and social distancing will continue to apply. Each high school will communicate their plans for seniors, including cap and gown distribution. Well, school districts around the Alamo City will not look or feel the same when they reopen. The superintendents of Northside ISD and San Antonio ISD say schools will face social distancing and budget constraints. They say schools are designed for efficiency and the new guidelines could make creating a learning space more difficult. Fewer students on buses, lunches in classrooms and no contact sports could all be changes to come. The schools need to be prepared in the event they shut down again because of a surge in cases once schools reopen. 
Similar to Texas, vast majority of American students won't return to their schools this academic year, but in one state, schools have the option to reopen as early as this week. And a small number of students will be back in class, while other states weigh serious decisions about the future. CNN's Karen Kafer reports from Washington. A small number of students in Montana will be back in the classroom this week. Governor Steve Bullock said local districts can reopen this Thursday, May 7th, and some very small schools, fewer than 100 students, are taking him up on it. One is a one-room schoolhouse with 14 students in grades K through 8, and school lets out later this month. But they are expected to be among the first U.S. students back in class amid the coronavirus pandemic, and they will very much be the exception. At least 46 states plus the District of Columbia have no plans to resume the 2019-2020 academic year. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said Tuesday his state will use the time and work with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and a team of experts to examine the vulnerabilities in the education system exposed by the coronavirus crisis and do things differently. Let's take this experience and really learn how we can do differently and better with our education system in terms of technology and virtual education, uh, etc. And that's something we're actively working on through this process. So it's not about just reopening schools. When we are reopening schools, let's open a better school. When schools do reopen, the American Academy of Pediatrics says it should be a phase in, maybe with reduced hours, and it should only be done if it can be done so safely. The group also says schools should have a plan to shut back down again if there's a resurgence of the virus, which experts anticipate may take place in the fall and winter months. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Right now, it's just about 10 minutes past the hour, 70 degrees. Online dating just took another step. Tinder will soon offer video chats in its dating app. The president leaving Washington for the first time in nearly two months. I'm Alex Perche, coming up the reason for his trip and his message to Americans returning to work. And outside with live cam, yeah, a few showers and storms here or there, and a uh, Mother's Day weekend forecast still look very promising. Mike will get you updated coming up. Welcome back. Just about 614 on your Wednesday morning. President Trump traveled out of Washington for the first time in nearly two months visiting a Honeywell factory in Phoenix, Arizona. That factory is now making N95 masks. Alex Prochet has more from Washington. Good morning. The coronavirus death toll is now over 71,000. More than three dozen states are easing restrictions. The president pushing for more to follow suit. Touring a facility that makes those critical N95 masks, President Trump pitching his case for reopening the country. We can't keep our country closed for the next five years. Of the 38 states now easing restrictions, cases are on the rise in at least 19. The president sitting down with ABC's David Muir about the possibility of more death due to reopening. It's possible there will be some because you won't be locked into an apartment or a, or a house or whatever it is. but. At the same time, we're going to practice social distancing. We're President Trump also it. defending his move to wind down his coronavirus task force and touting testing availability for returning workers. If they want to get tested to see if they've been exposed to the virus, uh, they can have access to both the antibody have tests. No problem. His they optimism in contrast to warnings in two new analysis. One from Johns Hopkins reports the daily death rate could double by June. The other from the University of Washington that with premature openings, the number of deaths could increase to nearly 135,000 by August 4th. These models have been so wrong from day one. The president was also asked about unemployment. One of his advisors is projecting it to hit 19 percent. The president continuing to say that we're going to have a strong third quarter. New unemployment numbers are out tomorrow. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 615, 70 degrees. It is time to check the roadways once again. See how your Wednesday traffic is shaping up. And then we do have one major accident, but not on the main lanes, but rather on the access road westbound I-10 uh, right there at Martin Luther King Drive. So watch out for emergency vehicles that are out there at the scene. Or don't forget, you must slow down 20 miles an hour below the speed limit or vacate to the next available lane. Now, as we take a look out there, 410 at Fredericksburg Road, no issues in I-10 and Callahan. Traffic moving along fairly well. We've seen those spots on the lens all morning long. They haven't moved, so chances are 
Maybe it's just some residue left on the lens. A little dirt or something like that out there. So. Could be. Yeah, we do still have a couple of showers showing up uh, around the area, and this sort of uh, snuck in here. But otherwise, you step outside this morning, it's really comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's like nice this. out there. And it was nice uh, last night, too. Great to sit outside last night and enjoy a beautiful uh, sunset last night. The end of day shimmer of sunshine. Kind of poetic there Ooh. and it's going to be a good looking afternoon today. We do obviously still have some of these uh, showers and a couple of a uh, couple of storms showing up. Nothing showing up in this picture looking off to the northwest from the airport and actually it looks like the whole area of rain is continuing to sort of diminish and it will continue to diminish as the uh, the morning rolls on. We've still got a couple of lightning strikes being detected here just to the west of uh, Pearsall as well as down around Carn City. Now this cell in western Atascosa County obviously is dying down. This one southern Bear County into Wilson County appears to be kind of spreading out a little bit and growing so we may start to see a couple of lightning strikes with that and the other thing is don't be surprised if there are a couple little spots with some uh, very small um, pea size or even smaller hail associated with a couple of these storms. And it's going to be the exception rather than the rule, but just to kind of be on the lookout for that or don't be surprised by it. Nothing is showing up in and around the metropolitan area. And even though we did have some of this rain showing up on radar, speculate that a lot of it was evaporated before it reached the ground because we've got temperatures in the 60s and, and low 70s, but then the dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, about 20 25 degrees lower than that so you've got a really dry layer of air in the atmosphere so when those raindrops fall through it they evaporate because the air is so dry so yesterday we had the front move on through which you can see on the uh, satellite radar loop and that spawned a couple of uh, thunderstorms down there along the coastal plain and then behind it this disturbance kind of snuck in here and sort of got things going a little bit and that's what's producing some of these showers and thunderstorms but those will continue to work their way on out of here as the uh, computer model indicates and you know a few leftover showers late this afternoon that's going to be about it as far as the humidity stays comfortable today it's going to be another great day to sit outside and enjoy the sunset later on this evening with these dew points on the low side and we start off very nice tomorrow but then now also especially along the coastal plain could be a patch or two of fog tomorrow just because we'll have those clear skies. However, throughout the day tomorrow, here comes the humidity dew points and moisture continue to go up. That's going to be setting the stage for more rain chances than on Friday as the next front approaches. So we'll have a couple of showers and thunderstorms around and then that'll extend into early Saturday. So that'd be great if we got some rain. Then it gets out of here just in time for most all the weekend, including Mother's Day 80 today at noon. I'm going to still call it mostly cloudy skies, especially down to the south, more clearing up to the uh, north. And then later on today, 85 for a high temperature. Good looking day, northeasterly wind, partly cloudy skies, very comfortable humidity. Tomorrow, beautiful start. And then same temperature. It's going to feel a little different tomorrow afternoon, though, because of some of that extra humidity. 80 on Friday. More humid showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Those will extend overnight into early Saturday morning. Then we start to clear out. Wonderful day on Saturday. Superb day. How's that sound for Mother's superb Day? Superb sounds superb. superb. We're looking forward to this weekend, aren't we? I sure am. Thank you. Starting Mom. Monday, we need to start playing up Father's Day. I don't Absolutely. Think we, I don't think we get enough time. So. Oh, well, that's not true. Can you spearhead that for uh, us? Like I, I'm lead, happy to do it, but I, I think you get plenty of attention. Lead art. Oh, okay. So she's not going to lead the task force, is she? Oh, I said I will. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. good. Definitely. All right. Great. All right. So there'll be daily tips. Uh, for everybody planning ahead starting Monday. Okay, that's a deal. Okay. Right now, 620, 70 degrees. New coronavirus vaccine trials starting up. Volunteers are getting their first doses, and researchers are hoping for approvals this fall. Find out more in your GMA First Look after the break. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. Hey, can I go? Hold on one second. Sure. Okay. Okay. Safe driver save 40%. Guys, guys. Check it out. Safe driver save 40%. Safe driver save 40%. Safe driver save 40%. That's safe driver save 40%. It is. That's safe driver save 40%. It's right there. It's him. He's here. He's right here. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> That's totally him. That's him. That's totally the guy. Safe drivers do save 40%.
Click or call for a quote today. What makes you you? Your cells. Trillions of them. That's why Centrum contains 24 key nutrients to feed your cells, supporting your energy so you can take care of what matters most. Central. Feed your cells, fuel your life. It's a familiar story. Allergies ruining your sleep and next day too. Taking Zizol at night relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec at nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. In this morning's GMA First Look, the race for a vaccine. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech officially launching human trials in the United States, giving the first volunteers a dose of the potential vaccine, or a placebo, at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. On Monday, David Rock, a 26-year-old microbiology and immunology PhD student there, was the very first person to be injected. The study, taking place at multiple sites across the country, will test four different variations of the vaccine, all using genetic material known as messenger RNA, hoping to spark an immune system response, including the production of antibodies to fight the virus if that person's exposed. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive, a live interview with one of the lead doctors of the Pfizer vaccine trial, Dr. Kathleen Newsel. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Zoom and the feds teaming up. The company confirmed to ABC News that's working with the FBI to track down people who are taking part in Zoom bombing. That's when hackers crash a video conference and spew hateful language or worse. There have been countless incidents since the pandemic started. Airbnb getting rid of one quarter of its workforce. The company announced it's slashing 1,900 jobs worldwide. It's one of the largest Silicon Valley layoffs during the outbreak. The CEO cited a potential 50% drop in revenue compared to last year. And your next Tinder date could be virtual. The dating app adding a video chat later this year. Tinder says the average number of daily messages rose by 27% in April as people have been staying home. Your time now 625 and it is 70 degrees outside. Our Katrina Weber standing by with the latest information on an east side shooting we've been following all morning here on GMSA. Learning the latest after the break. And we continue our look at lawn care today. We'll see the benefits of using sod versus seed to get the green grass everyone wants. And Marcus is here tracking traffic for us as the sun is starting to come up on your Wednesday morning. There's 10 at Dominion. We'll be right back. A night out in the front yard has ended with three people being wounded. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say they were shot by someone in a passing car. I'll have more on that story. Gunfire near San Antonio College ends with one man in his 20s with a gunshot wound to his chest and a responding officer having a heart attack. I'm Max Massey, I'll have the details. And anyway, with some showers and storms rotating through the area earlier this morning, but now the sun is coming up. Mike says uh, things are still kind of interesting out there. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is May 6th. Thanks for being with us, everybody. How are the roadways looking this morning? Oh, uh, despite the one major accident, uh, things look pretty good. Just that one little blip on the roadway. Okay, and uh, decidedly, we've had a lack of rain here in the city yeah. this morning, haven't we, Mike? Yeah, and really comfortable when you step outside because that dry air came in yesterday and then this little disturbance snuck in, in behind that. And so that's what's been producing some showers and thunderstorms and kept some clouds around here. So that kept temperatures up from what we had uh, thought they were going to be earlier uh, yesterday coming into today. So we're up about 10 degrees from that. Uh, as this loops through, even over the past couple of hours, you can see how the rain has definitely started to diminish as far as aerial coverage is concerned. We still have a couple of lightning strikes just to the uh, west of Pearsall right there. And uh, everything's kind of moving off to the uh, east southeast. And this cell, we had a fairly decent one going there in western Atascosa County. That's kind of fizzled out. This one is still sort of taking shape moving into Wilson County. Don't be surprised with some of these if there are maybe a couple little spots of uh, some pea sized hail. Not very likely, but just don't be surprised by that. We had a few showers that scooted across on radar, but I think a lot of this was evaporating before it ever reached the ground because we've got temperatures in the 60s and 70s, but the dew point temperatures are about 20, 25 degrees lower than that. So we've got some really, really dry air. And so a lot of that rain was uh, more than likely evaporating before it ever reached the ground. Mold and grass are on the low side and throughout the rest of today. We'll have some of these scattered showers and thunderstorms continue to work their way down to the south. Then partly cloudy skies, mid 80s today, 
really comfortable. Great day to sit outside and enjoy the uh, the sunset tonight. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, mid 80s again. Difference being, we start off very comfortable, but the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here. So that's going to set us up for a few showers and thunderstorms on Friday, Friday night into early Saturday. And that's along the next front that moves on through here. Then we'll be clearing on out and uh, Saturday afternoon, Sunday look fantastic. Details coming up. Time saver traffic once again. And Marcus, you said there is one major accident right now. One major accident, Mike, that's going to be over on the east side and it's on the access road. So not on the main lanes, but on the access road of westbound I-10 right there as you're approaching Martin Luther King Drive. So just keep that in mind. Other areas, uh, not too bad. Let's take a look outside through Transguide. You can see 21 there at 410 tra travel in both directions looking pretty good. And then 21 to Grayson North and South on lanes, no issues right now. 410 at Austin Highway looking great with no problems there. 410 at Fredericksburg. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. Three people, including an elderly woman, nursing gunshot wounds this morning. Police say some uninvited guests with guns dropped in on an outdoor gathering at an east side home. Our Katrina Weber's live report from Public Safety Headquarters downtown. Katrina, good morning. Have police caught up with any shooters yet? Not as far as we know. Now, they were told that those gunshots were fired by more than one person in a maroon SUV. And it seems their targets were people who were gathered outside a home in the 4600 block of Belinda Lee, not far from W.W. White Road and Interstate 10. San Antonio police told us that there were several people gathered in the front yard of a home around 11 last night. A 90 year old woman was grazed by a bullet in her forehead. Another woman in her 20s suffered a graze wound to the arm. The police say both of them were treated at the scene. A man in his 30s, though, had to be rushed to a hospital. Police told us he was in critical condition with a gunshot wound to his belly. Again, the only information that police re uh, released to us is that they were looking for that maroon SUV, but they were talking to other people in the area to see if they could get more information. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, gunfire at a park near San Antonio College ends with two men in the hospital. One was in his 20s, another was a responding officer. The officer is not dealing with a gunshot wound. A police sergeant says he actually had a heart attack on the way to the scene. Max Massey joins us live on the corner of Dewey and McCullough, where the officer had that heart attack. So, Max, how did all of this start? That is a great question. It was an unusual sequence of events. Police telling us a man in his 20s found with a gunshot wound to his chest just a few blocks from here. But an officer who was responding to that scene actually had a medical episode on the way. So take a look at their screen right now. This was the scene that unfolded last night near San Antonio College. This was around 9.50 p.m. Now, police responded to that call for a shooting. Investigators say the man in his 20s was shot at the park. He was able to get back to his apartment complex. That's when he called police. Now, where the shooting happened is Alamo College police jurisdiction, and so Alamo police were responding. And that's when another call came out for a crash near McCullough and Dewey. The sergeant on the scene says that one of the responding officers had a heart attack, started sideswiping vehicles on his way to that scene. He was transported to the hospital in critical condition. As for the gunshot victim, we're told he was brought to Bamsey and at last check is in serious condition. As for the investigation, police tell us that they only found one shell casing in the middle of the street. Right now, no suspects in custody. Mark, Leslie. Katrina, Max, thank you so much. Right now, just about 635, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has given the green light for school districts to continue planning their graduation ceremonies. Texas high schools have four options for the celebrations, including outdoor, in-person, and in-person ceremonies. This is what Harlandale ISD has announced for their high schools. Alicia Bedetta has more information on that. Good morning, Harlandale ISD is one of the first San Antonio area schools to announce that they are moving forward with these in-person graduation ceremonies. Even so, things are expected to look much different for the class of 2020 this year. And although not many details have been released just yet, it was confirmed that the in-person commencement ceremony will take place at Memorial Stadium. In a press release, Harlandale ISD announced their graduations will take place on June 1st, 
the second and third. Each high school so far, the district says, will have some restrictions and additional screening will be implemented to follow the guidelines established by the Texas Education Agency. All ceremonies will also follow social distancing guidelines and will include a limit on the number of guests. According to the school district, each high school will be in charge of planning how that cap and gown distribution will look like as well as giving the information to the students on planning for the graduation itself. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, a federal judge ruled the Democratic primary in New York must happen in the month of June. It was originally scheduled for March, but uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo changed the date due to the stay home order. Then last week, the primary was canceled altogether because Joe Biden dropped out of the race. But the judge ruled to hold the primary on June 23rd. In your morning consumer news, a new problem for car dealers. They need more pickup trucks. Dealers across the country say the long-term no-interest loans offered during the pandemic led to a surge in customers wanting pickups. They say inventories still haven't recovered after the GM strike. And correction, I think that meant to say Bernie Sanders dropped out of the race. Rideshare app Lyft is releasing a new program called Wait and Save. Lyft operators, or riders rather, can now opt for a longer wait time to be picked up by a cheaper ride. The uh, company says the changes are due to COVID-19. Before the pandemic, Lyft allowed customers to share rides with other people for a cheaper price. But with distancing rules, the rideshare company has stopped that option. The wait and save option will be available in 90 cities starting this week. With businesses all across the state reopening, right now is the perfect time to search for a job. Many companies in San Antonio are hiring, and here are a few you might be interested in. Human Capital International looking for three customer service representatives to join their team. Some qualifications are a high school diploma or GD and six months experience in a familiar field. Abacus Technology Corporation is looking for a systems engineer. Applicants must have at least 10 years experience in systems engineering and a bachelor's degree. And Broadway Bank hiring a mortgage loan coordinator. Applicants for the position must have at least six years experience in mortgage processing and must have a four-year college degree. For more information on these jobs and many, many others, go to workintexas.com. Right now, 638, 70 degrees. Having a full lawn means you need to answer the question, sod or seed? We're gonna take a look at which choice could be best for you coming up after the break. Six forty one doesn't matter if you're in a newly built home with no lawn or an older home with patchy spots of grass here and there. You only have two options to turn your yard into a lush green show place. Your neighbors will envy sod or seed. This is one of these aunties list report. RJ Marquez shows us how to know which option is right for you. A good thick lawn always starts with a well prepped base. It's important to prepare the soil whether you're doing sod or seed. So go ahead, break the soil and add at least two inches of fresh topsoil or compost so that the sod or seed has good soil to take root in. Sod takes just two or three weeks to establish a good root system. It's about eight times more expensive than seed, so don't waste your investment. Water it daily. Keep it wet for a couple weeks. I mean, every day, 10, 10 minutes a day, two times a day, uh, because that helps, because all the roots are on the top of the sod. And so you don't need to soak the ground to get it wet. You want all the moisture to be in the top layer. If you're considering sod, be sure that your yard has a good amount of sunlight because sod doesn't do as well if it's laid in an area of all shade. Seed is a better option for people who don't need immediate results or who don't want to spend a lot. A seeded yard develops a stronger root system because it's established in native soil. Fall is the ideal time to spread seed. Springtime requires more patience. Because they're so much cooler, the seed lays dormant. And, and then when it does germinate, it's fighting against a lot of the uh, early spring weeds that, that are already germinating at that time. So um, I would much rather do seeding late, late uh, summer through the fall. If you decide to plant seed, it's best to get the highest quality seed you can afford. Make sure it has zero weed content and a germination rate of about 85%. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 643. Let's check the roadways once again. Hey, Marcus. So far, things look pretty good. We're clearing up that accident there. I-10, uh, the access road, Martin Luther King. Let's take a look at Transguy. 35, 410 so far, no issues there. 37 at Jones, <clears throat> excuse me, looking pretty good. Take a look there, I-10 at Ralph Fair Road. So I-10 at uh, 410, things look a little bit 
busier out there. And we, <coughs> excuse me, we do have that stay home, work safe. You okay, Marcus? But somehow, or sometimes, <clears throat> a little bit of a sinus, something's in the air, but sometimes the uh, staying home is not safe. So we do have a couple of numbers for you. The National Domestic Violence Hotline, 1-800-799-SAFE, <clears throat> excuse me, or the non-emergency SAPD number, 210-207-SAPD, and I need more coffee. <laughs> and as always, as Marcus is going to, because a little tickle in your throat, you just can't help those things. Uh, in an emergency, uh, as you always mentioned, call 911, correct? Or your local law correct. enforcement establishment if things are getting a little bit right. uh, tough at home. And keep an eye on your neighbors, as you like to say, too. And the neighbors and the kids and your, your relatives as well, because it is stressful, everyone being cooped up in the house. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate I like that. this picture, Mike. This is a great picture. This is like, okay, I guess what I'm going to be doing today. It's like, sit on a rock and just enjoy. Enjoy the nice little breeze we had yesterday. Enjoy the dry air that we're going to have uh, today. Uh, we have dry air in places. You can see things are uh, obviously lightening up, but we got a good cloud cover out there. Uh, that helped hold temperatures up. So we were forecasting it to be about 10 degrees cooler this morning, but clouds acted like a blanket. We still have dry air in place, and so that's making it feel really comfortable. You step outside, it's a very nice morning. There are a couple of showers out there, and as you can see, as this just goes through the past couple of hours, everything is just continuing to diminish. And still got a couple right here in southern Medina County. You know, we've had a few lightning strikes here and there, so we got to watch out for that. This one is now not been materializing as of yet, and I think things are just going to continue to uh, die down, even though we we'll still have a couple of showers around here. And a lot of this in places never reached the ground because the air is so dry out there. That was the situation here in town. We had a couple of showers that uh, were indicated on radar, but with the uh, temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, low 70s, and then dew point temperatures are about 20 to uh, maybe 25 degrees lower than that. Very dry air here at the surface, so a lot of rain. Obviously, some did reach the ground. That was the situation down there in uh, southern Maverick County and southwestern Dimmick County, where it picked up uh, some estimates three and a half to four inches of rain. But in many situations, the uh, rain was evaporating before it ever reached the ground. So here's uh, the satellite radar loop over the past couple of hours. We had the front move through yesterday, ushered in the beautiful weather, and then we had that little disturbance kind of sneaking in behind it, and that's what has uh, touched off some of these showers and thunderstorms. And computer models indicate that they will continue to just kind of die down. Maybe one or two leftovers well down in the south. That's going to be about it. As far as the humidity, stays nice today, so good day to sit on a rock and just enjoy it. And tomorrow is going to start off very comfortable as well. But throughout the day, humidity, dew point temperatures are definitely going to be coming back into the picture. That's going to set the stage for some more rain chances on Friday as the next front works its way on through here. So a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, especially afternoon and evening into Friday, extending into the early morning hours of Saturday. And then we're going to be clearing on out. It's going to be cool and wonderful this weekend. 80 today at noon. I still call it mostly cloudy skies, especially down to the south. A little more sunshine further up to the north, northeasterly wind at uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And tomorrow, 85 degrees for a high temperature. Or excuse me, this afternoon, 85 for a high temperature. Jumping ahead of myself here and really, really comfortable today. Tomorrow we start off fantastic. 85 again tomorrow, but the difference being it's going to be a more humid 85 degrees. Some showers and thunderstorms on Friday extending into Saturday morning, and then we start to clear on out that next front, which will move through about mid afternoon Friday. So that's going to hold temperatures down. Then only 77 on Saturday, 53 starting off on Mother's Day morning. Oh, it sounds like a beautiful day for Mother's it Day. It will be. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. 647, 70 degrees. Ending a long day in your backyard can be more enjoyable with the sound of running water, which is why fountains are becoming more popular. So join us tomorrow for GMSA. We're going to go over what you need to know before you install a water fountain. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. It's Wednesday. We're glad you're with us. Gunfire breaks up a gathering outside an east side home. 
three people, including a 90 year old woman, now have gunshot wounds. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say that two of the victims have only grazed wounds, but a man in his 30s was in critical condition when he was rushed to a hospital. All three people were found in the 4600 block of Belinda Lee. Police say there had been a gathering in the front yard of a home. Witnesses told them around 11 last night, a maroon SUV drove up and more than one person inside of it started firing at the group. The 90 year old woman was grazed on her forehead while a 20 year old woman was grazed on her arm. The police say both of them were treated at the scene. The man who was shot and is in critical condition was wounded in his belly. Again, he was rushed to a hospital. Police are still trying to track down that maroon SUV and to talk to people who may have more information. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Shots fired in the 1400 block of North Main, just a few blocks away from where we are right now, ends with a man in his 20s with a gunshot wound to his chest. In a weird series of events, an officer responded to the shooting, had a heart attack, and caused a crash in this area where we are right now. I'm Max Massey. Here's what we know as of now. Now, this was the scene just before 10 o'clock last night. Police say a man in his 20s was shot near a park, and he was able to get back to his apartment, and that's when he called 911. Now, this is Alamo College Police Territory. They were responding, and at the same time, a call came in for a crash on Dewey near McCullough. The sergeant on the scene tells us the responding officer had a heart attack. He was sideswiping cars during his medical episode, and he was transported to the hospital in a critical condition. As for that gunshot investigation, we are told one shell casing was found in the street near the shooting. No suspects in custody as of now. As for that victim, we're told he was transported to Bamsey at last check in serious condition. Reporting near San Antonio College, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. This morning, a senior government scientist is claiming the Trump administration failed to prepare for the coronavirus before touting an unproven drug as a quick fix. I was pressured to let politics and cronyism drive decisions over the opinions of the best scientists we have in government. Dr. Rick Bright had been the head scientist overseeing the production of a vaccine. In a whistleblower complaint, he claims he was assigned to a lesser role after resisting widespread use of hydroxychloroquine, a malaria drug pushed by President Trump. I witnessed government leadership rushing blindly into a potentially dangerous situation by bringing in a non-FDA approved chloroquine from Pakistan and India from facilities that had never been approved by the FDA. Bright also claims his superiors rejected his warnings about the spread of the virus, missing an early opportunity to stock up on critical supplies. In response, the Department of Health and Human Services says Bright was transferred to work on coronavirus testing. And the department said, we are deeply disappointed that he has not shown up to work on behalf of the American people and lead on this critical endeavor. In the meantime, President Trump's nominee for Inspector General of Pandemic Relief Funds answered questions on Capitol Hill Tuesday. Brian Miller is a former lawyer in the White House Counsel's Office. If confirmed, he would oversee part of the $2 trillion stimulus package. He vowed to be independent. I will conduct every audit and investigation with fairness and impartiality. I will be vigilant to protect the integrity and independence of the Office of Special Inspector General. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Now five minutes till seven. I've checked the roadways once again, Marcus. Well, right now as we uh, take a look at different trans guide uh, cameras there, you can see 10 at 410. No issues there, and we're moving over to 410 Austin Highway on the opposite side, up on the northeast side. Looks pretty good there. Uh, 410 at Fredericksburg Road, traffic moving along with no delays. And up there at the airport, 281 at 410. Mike, looks like that rain held off. Yeah, I mean, some folks did get some rain uh, and it's continuing to uh, sort of diminish. Going to show you that in a second. Obviously, lots of clouds out there have held temperatures up somewhat, and that's all that's left over right there in Wilson County and a couple of showers in uh, Medina and a bit in Frio County. Down around uh, Southern Maverick County, you picked up a whole bunch of rain earlier this morning. Mid to 60s to low 70s and then 85 for a high temperature. Humidity is very low today. It's going to be a really comfortable day to be outside. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Marcus. Thanks, and thank you so much for spending your morning with us. Good morning, America's next. We're back here for GMSA at 9.